All right, so good morning, everyone. I'm Angela Nibel, and today I'll be discussing what people resourcing is. So people resourcing, often called employee resourcing or simply resourcing, is term used to cover employment activities that ensure the organization has the people it needs and deals with employee issues, such as turnover and absenteeism issues. And the employment activities comprise workforce planning, recruitment and selection, attracting and retaining people, managing employee turnover, absence management, and talent management. So later I'll be also discussing strategic resourcing, workforce planning, recruitment selection, resource practice, and talent management. And now let's proceed to strategic resourcing. So strategic resourcing is a key part of strategic human resource management. Uh, matching human resources to the strategic and operational requirements of the organization and ensuring the full utilization of those resources. So dito sa people resource, ito yung paghahanap ng mga taong kailangan ng isang organization. Well, ito naman sa strategic resourcing. So hindi ka lang basta-basta dapat uh, hire ng hire. It is also about promoting people in the organization na deserving. So, for example, there is employee 1 and employee 2. So, si employee 1, bago pa lang siya sa company. And nakikitaan mo talaga siya na uh, magaling siya, na may talent din. While, ito naman si employee 2, uh, matagal na siya sa company, but yung performance is the usual lang. Ganun. So, si employee 1, uh, mas magaling siya. So, yung ipopromote mo, Siyempre, si employee one kasi mas nakikitaan mo siya ng pagiging competent. Ayun nga. Na it, is all, it is concerned not only with obtaining and keeping the number and quality of staff required, but also with selecting and promoting people who fit the culture and the strategic requirements of the organization. So, uh, there is an objective of strategic resourcing. Strategic resourcing aims to ensure that the organization has the people it needs to achieve its business goals. Like strategic HRM, strategic resourcing is essentially about the integration of business and employee resourcing strategies so that the latter contribute to achievement of the former. So ito yung uh, right people for the right job. So for example, you have an accounting firm. So, syempre mag-hire ka ng mga accountant, graduate na accountant or CPA passers. The, also, the objective is therefore to ensure that a firm achieves competitive advantage by recruiting, retaining, and developing more capable people than its rivals. The organization attracts such people by being the employer of choice. Next is strategic approach. The philosophy behind the strategic approach to resourcing is that it is people who implement the strategic plan. As Queen Mills in 1983 put it, the process is one of planning with people in mind. So the integration of business and resourcing strategies is based on an understanding of direction in which the organization is going and the determination of first is the number of people required to meet the business needs. Next is the skills and behavior required to support the achievement of business strategies. The impact of organizational restructuring as a result of rationalization, decentralization, the layering, acquisitions, mergers, products, or market development, or the introduction of new technology. So, for example, cellular manufacturing. Also, plans for changing the culture of the organization in such areas of, as ability to deliver performance, standards, quality, customer service, team working, and flexibility, which indicate the needs of people with different attitude, beliefs, and personal characteristics. Additionally, performance management processes can be used to identify development needs. 
including the skills and behaviors, and motivate people to make the most effective use of their abilities. Competency frameworks and profiles can be prepared to define the skills and behaviors required and can be used in selection. Employee development and employee reward processes. Then also, the aim should be to develop a reinforcing bundle of strategies along these lines. So there are components of strategic employee resourcing. Overarching component of strategic resourcing is the integration of resourcing and business plans. Within this framework, strategic resourcing includes specific strategies for Number one is workforce planning, alternatively called human resource planning. So, dito assessing future business, assessing future business needs and deciding on the numbers and types of people required. So, dito naman, uh, dapat alam mo kung gaano karami yung kailangan mo na employee na ilalagay mo doon. So, for example, before I work as a local store marketing sa McDonald's. So, sa ano kami, sa mga birthday parties, ganun. So, example, sa isang araw, uh, there are four parties. So, dalawa sa morning, dalawa sa hapon. So, ano, sino-sino ba yung mga kailangan mong i-plot doon? So, kailangan mo na host, then birthday party coordinator, birthday party assistant. So, tatlo sa umaga, so tatlo din sa hapon. So, you need six people para ma, para para maging okay yung uh, isang araw na yun. The next, developing the organization's employee value proposition and its employer brands. The employee value proposition is what an organization offers that prospective or existing employees would value and which would help to persuade them to join or remain with the business. Employer brand is the image presented by an organization as a good employer. So, so ako before, uh, as our student sa McDonald's, so lagdalap ko sa McDonald's kasi nga, they are, ano, they are working students friendly. So, ayun siya. Employer brand. So, pagka nabanggit agad na McDonald's, ay, ano yun sila, yung mga employees nila, ano, uh, mga students, nakatulong sila sa mga estudyante. So, next is resourcing plans. Preparing plans for finding people from within the organization and or for learning and development programs to help people learn new skills. If needs cannot be satisfied, satisfied from within the organization, it involves preparing longer-term plans for ensuring the recruitment and selection process will satisfy them. Ayan, so kung ano ba yung mga uh, effective ways na gagawin ng management. So for example, learning materials, kung ano yung mga learning materials na pwede nilang i-prepare. Next is retention plans. Preparing plans for retaining the people the organization needs. So ano ba yung kailangan para mapanatili yung mga employees sa organization? So before, uh, I work sa Bank of Makati. Then meron sila dito ang uh, gratuity pay. So, kapag ka mag-stay ka lang ng five years, your salary will double. Ah, magiging five times. Meron ka ang matatanggap na gratuity pay na five times your salary. Then, next is flexibility plans. Planning for increased flexibility in the use of human resources to enable the organization to make the best use of people and adapt swiftly to changing circumstances. Then, talent management, ensuring that the organization has the talented people it requires to provide for management succession and meet present and future business needs. And that's it for the chapter 16, which is strategic resources. And now, let's proceed to chapter 17, which is workforce planning. Workforce planning is a core process of human resource management that is shaped by the organizational strategy and ensures the right number of people with the right skills in the right place at the right time to deliver short and long-term organizational objectives. 
So workforce planning also may be conducted as an overall approach to establish and satisfy people requirements covering all major employee categories and skills. So workforce planning today covers a wider range of activities and the top five planning activities were succession planning, flexible working, demand and supply, forecasting, skills audit, or gap analysis, talent, and talent management. So the link between workforce and business planning is that workforce planning is an integral part of business planning. So the strategic planning process defines projected changes in the types of activities carried out by the organization and the scale of those activities. It identifies the core competen competencies, competencies that the organization needs to achieve it, its goals and therefore it, its skills and behavioral requirements. And workforce planning also interprets these plans in terms of people requirements, but it may influence the business strategy by drawing attention to the ways in which people could be, could be developed and deployed more effectively to further the achievement of business goals. And it will also address issues concerning the supply of suitable people. Then, first, there are reasons for planning. First is planning for substantive reasons. That is to have a practical effect by optimizing the use of resources and making them more flexible, acquiring and nurturing skills that take time to develop. Uh, identifying potential problems and minimizing the chances of making a bad decision. Next is planning because of the process benefits, which involves understanding the present in order to confront the future, challenging assumptions and liberating thinking, making explicit decisions that can later be challenged, standing back and providing an overview and ensuring that long-term thinking is not driven out by short-term focus. Then last is planning for organizational reasons, uh, which involves communicating plans so as to obtain support adherence to them, linking each our plans to business plans so as to influence them, regaining cor corporate control over operating units and coordinating and Integrating organizational decision making and actions. So, managing disadvantages and um, planning. So, issues in planning. The main difficult, difficulties faced by those involved in quantitative hard work force planning are the impact of change and trying to predict the future. So, many organizations therefore adapt a short term approach and deal with deficits or surpluses of people as they arise. This problem will not be so acute in a stable marketplace, which largely passive and static customers, and with scope for long-term forecasting, but these are rare conditions today, even in the public sector, where for a long time, workplace planning has time. It can be said that workforce planning is more art then science, perhaps the accuracy of demand and supply forecast is less important than the overall understanding of what the organization needs in the way of people which can be generated by systematic approach to planning. Next is, uh, the table is about systematic approach to workforce planning. So, nito na po yung meaning niya. Then, ito yung pinaka-table. So, the first is the business plan. Uh, business plan provides the basis for the workforce plan. And so far, as it set out what the organization intends to do in terms of activities and scale of those activities. Then, followed by forecast of activity, activity levels. Forecast of future activity levels flow from the business plan, which will have implications for demand for people. Then after that is the analysis. Then outside the analysis, there is scenario planning and data collection. So for the scenario planning, one of the examples is the business continuity on 
uh, how the organization will continue despite the uh, uh, kapag kami mga nangyayari na hindi inaasahan ganun. so for the data collection naman uh, ito yung mag-gather ka ng information uh, using workforce planning can be collected under the following headings so qualitative internal data quantitative internal data qualitative external data and quantitative external data so for example sa banks so i gather mo yung uh, mga uh, effective ways nila so for example the cam cash acceptance machine then meron ding uh, bago ngayon yung kapag uh, pipicturean mo na lang yung check para ma-deposit mo siya so pag na-collect na yung mga data na yun i-analyze na siya then dito papasok yung demand forecast and supply forecast. So in the analysis naman, use all the information together from the business plan, the activity forecast scenarios, and internal and external data to provide the basis for demand and supply forecast. And for the demand forecasting, it is the process of estimating the future numbers of people required and the likely skills and competences they will need the basis of the forecast is the annual budget and longer term business plan. While the supply forecast is uh, measuring the number of people likely to be available from within the outside the organization. Then, after that, forecasting of future requirements. And to forecast future requirements, it is necessary to analyze the demand and supply forecast to identify any deficits or surpluses. After that is uh, action planning. So action planning are derived from the broad resourcing strategies and the more detailed analysis of demand and supply factors. However, the plans often have to be short-term and flexible because of the difficulty of making firm predictions about workforce requirements in times of rapid change. Then after that is the implementation. Implementation of the actions will provide a challenge. A flexible approach involving quick responses is needed to cope with unforeseeable changes in people requirements. Then after that is the monitoring and evaluation. So after ma-implement lahat simula business plan, uh, i-monitor siya and i-evaluate because of unpredictable events. The implementation of action plan does not always run smoothly. So it is, it is necessary to monitor progress carefully, evaluate the effect, and as required, amend the action plan. So inside the action plan are the following. Recruitment, retention, succession, talent, flexible working, learning and development, and last is the downsizing. So next is for the chapter 17. So next is the chapter 18. It is the process of finding and giving the people the organization needs. The latest part of recruitment process concerning deciding which applicants or candidates should be appointed to the
So, dito na nalagay yung, yung pain, then and um, of words, special requirements of technology, tagging, or unsocial hours, and learning development and career opportunities. So the recruitment role profile provides the basis for a person's specific report. And under the person's specification, it's also known as recruitment job. Recruitment or job specification defines the knowledge the knowledge uh, is what the individual needs to know to carry out the role. S is the skills and abilities that the individual has to be able to do to carry out the role. S is the behavioral competence and ability. The types of behavior required to sometimes also for knowledge of the role. So, uh, this should be a uh, role specific, uh, ideally based on an analysis of employees who are carrying. And also the behavior should also be used to organize and competency framework of the organization to help in ensuring that candidates should fit and support the organization's then qualifications and training. The professional technical or academic qualifications require training that the candidates should have undertaken. So, uh, mga pinag-aralan natin kung ano ba yung course na natapos natin o ano ba yung mga salinang sa language yung salinang sa language. Then, next is the specifications uh, sa mga requirements. So, it's the types of achievements and activities that should be likely to be accepted. Next is specific demand. So, I think that the role of the role will be expected to achieve in specified areas. Or developing markets or products, to the community or levels of uh, customer service, either to see systems or uh, processes. And also, in special requirements, logging uh, and social hours will be used. So, ito ba yung, ito yung, um, yung, 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 Na to overstate the requirements, perhaps it is natural to go for the best, but setting an unrealistic minimum level for candidates increases the problem of attracting applicants and resulting in satisfaction, satisfaction among recruits when they find their talents are not being used. Understating requirements can compete with the details that happens less frequently. An example dito is sa pag-overstate ng requirements yung sa daliwag diba yung pakaraan ng friends at yung pakiging qualification nila is dapat na walang tatu yung yung pag-overstate ng pag-overstate ng So, next stage is pag-overstate ng pag-overstate sa ano na yung situation pag-overstate ng pag-overstate the following steps are required when planning out a candidate. So, first is to analyze the recruitment constraints, which is to develop an employee value proposition and employee brand. So, in here, candidates are in a sense of uh, selling themselves, but they are also buying what the organization has to offer. The next is to analyze the requirements to establish the sort of person is needed. So, first, it is necessary to establish what jobs have to be built and by way. Then, pay time of the field, but and person specification or is not available or out of date, there are a few ones that set up information on responsibility and competency requirements. And this information can be analyzed in the by education, qualifications, and experience. The next step is identify potential sources of candidates. So, first one combination should be given to internal candidates. The addition is always worth dying to persuade, persuade for employees to return to the organization or obtain suggestions from existing agencies. So, talent banks that are that record candidate data is collected and you can be maintained and referred to at this stage. So, so, uh, kailangan dahil dito ng 
difference no more eating things. So, in that point, I'm going to be a mother shop for the mother and you know, something on time shop. Then, why not offer another uh, another opportunity for not eating men and eating? So, in that way, you can have a good plan for your growth. Next is safety application. Safety application. Uh, is comparing information available about them with the key criteria in the person's specification. Uh, the criteria should be analyzed with the person so that they are fully understood. So, if you have a person who is a person who is a person who is a person Assess the suitability of candidates for the teams. They will be able to carry out a role such as most of the method of the when it comes to selection is the interview. So the aim is to input information about the candidates that they will be able to appreciate about how how well they will do the job and the speed to a decision. Uh, selection decision. So, the interview pa lang with the general report and the interview. But uh, with the first situation, mas matalas natin uh, na experience you and my teacher because of the pandemic time. So, an interview involves in certain discussion when it is an individual rather than a panel interview. It provides the, the best opportunity for the establishment of Close on the interview and the last day. Then, there are many interview and the way to structure the interview. So, here, all candidates are asked the same questions. All candidates are asked the same question, which will focus on the attributes and behaviors required to succeed in the job. So the answers may be scored to a rating system, while the other one is the unstructured, uh, unstructured interviews. So, and these are essentially a general discussion during which the interviewer asks a few questions that are relevant to what he or she is looking for, but without any specific aim in mind other than getting an overall picture of the candidate as an individual. The next stage is the selection testing. So for the selection testing, selection tests are used to provide valid, reliable evidence of levels of abilities, intelligence, personality characteristics, aptitudes, and attainments. So, intelligence test. So, ito yung mga ano, knowledge test. Ito yung mga tinitig natin na logical. May mga logical. Yun, yung mga computation. Next is the personality test. So, padalasin nito is yung mga situational. Even situational na, ano, na mga tanong. So, parang dito palang malalaman na nila kung paano ka magre-react sa isang uh, situation. The next is the ability test. So, example dito is the, yun sa mga call centers, uh, meron dito silang tinatawag na um, typing test. So, malaman nila kung gaano, karami yung word na type mo in a certain minute. Yun. Also, dito din may kita yung mga skills mo. Then, the aptitude test, this is the natural ability to do something. Next is assessing candidates. So a good test is one that provides data that enables reliable predictions of behavior or performance to be made and therefore assist in the process of making objective and reasoned decisions when selecting people for jobs. Next is obtaining references. The main purpose of a reference is obtaining in confidence factual information about a prospective employee. So this information is straightforward and essential. So it is, it is necessary to confirm the nature of the previous job, the period of time in employment, the reason for leaving if relevant, the salary or rate of pay and possibly the attendance record. 
So, eto na yung ano, yung tatawagan ng mga HR managers. Kung sino yung mga reference na nilalagay natin sa mga CV natin or sa mga resumes. So, uh, kadalasan dito is yung mga supervisors. So, i-confirm ng bago mong magig work, if ever, kung ano ba yung attitude mo sa work, kung paano ako mag-access test, mga ganyan, kung totoo ba yung mga nakalagay doon. So, for example, yung mga salary, ganyan, yung uh, attendance records mo. The next is checking applications. It is a sad fact that applicants all too often inform their prospective employers about their education, qualifications, and employment records. So, ayun, so dapat kapag ka maglalagay tayo ng information, it is all based on ta uh, kasi may kita ito, may kita to ng HR managers. So, meron silang mga certain ways para ma-check kung totoo ba lahat ng mga survey. Next stage is offering employment. The final stage in the selection procedures is to confirm the offer of employment after satisfactory references have been obtained and the applicant has passed the medical examination required for pension and life assurance purposes or because a certain standard of physical fitness is required for the work. So, ito na yung muna, abangan na lahat ay ang job offer. And so, dito na i-discuss kung ano, paano ba yung mga gagawin mo, ano, magkano yung salary, and then, bibigyan ka na ng mga referrals, then it's for the medical, and requirements. Then, last is following up. So, it is essential to follow up newly engaged employees to ensure that they have settled in and to check on how well they are doing. If there are any problems, it is much better to identify them at an early age rather than allowing them to foster. So, of course, hindi lang naman nagtatapos sa job offer yung uh, stages of recruitment. So, uh, after nun, dapat kamustahin mo rin siya kung ano na ba yung nasa na ba siya sa mga requirements, ano na ba ginagawa niya, or kung may problema ba, o ba kailangan niya ng guide from you para mas mapabilis yung ang uh, pag-aayos niya ng mga requirements. So, doon pa lang makakapag-build ka na ng relationship sa uh, magiging employee. And that's the end of the chapter 8 in recruitment and selection. Next is resourcing practice. Chapter 19, Resourcing Practice. So, Resourcing Practices cover developing an employee value proposition, creating an employer brand, analyzing employee turnover, tackling retention problems, managing absence management, introducing people to the organization, and releasing them from it. Then, under Resourcing Practice, there is employee value proposition. So an organization's employee value proposition consists of what it offers to prospective or existing employees that they will value and they will persuade them to join or remain with the business. So ano ba yung mga dapat na practice na gagawin para mag-remain employee sa organization? So, mayroong mga instances na sa tagal ni employee din sa organization, ayun pa rin yung ginagawa niyang work. So, umbaga, pabisado, pabisado niya na din. Parang itinarin na lang sa kanya. Then, why not uh, itayin siya sa ibang position? So, in that way, magkakaroon din siya na career growth. Then, next is employer brand. The employee value proposition can be expressed as an employer brand, the image presented by an organization as a good employer. Employer branding is the creation of a brand image of the organization for prospective employees. So parang kanina na-discuss na din to doon sa parang una-una resource, strategic resourcing. So, ayan, parang employer branding din 
nature. So, example din is McDonald's. So, uh, they are, ano, uh, working students family. So, pagka uh, yung mga employees ay uh, students, uh, para mas mag a sila dun sa time ng estudyante. So, kaya maraming mas mag sa organization nila kasi nga, nakakatulong sila sa mga students. Then, next is employee turnover. Employee turnover, sometimes known as labor turnover, wastage, or attrition. It is the rate at which people leave an organization. It is necessary to measure employee turnover and calculate its cost in order to forecast future losses for planning purposes and to identify the reasons that the reasons that people leave the organization plans can then be made to attack problems cause unnecessary turnover and reduce costs. Meron, meron formula dito na, an, na nakalagay para ma-measure yung turnover. So, number of levers in specified period times usual one year then divided by average of employees during the same period times 100. And then next is retention planning. Retention plan, the turnover of key employees can have a disproportionate impact on the business. The people that organization wish to retain are often the ones most likely to leave. There is no such thing as a job for life. And today's workers have few qualms about leaving employers. So action is required to retain talented people, but there are limits to what any organization can do. It is also necessary to encourage higher levels of contribution from existing talent and to value them accordingly. So, ano ba yung mga kailangang practice na gawin mo para manatili yung empleyado sa iyo? So, by giving bonu, bonuses, ganyan by, ano, para i-recognize sila, bigyan na awards, yun. ay yung mga pwedeng gawin practices para mag-retain yung mga employees sa organization. Then, um, Meron din para ano uh, factors affecting retention. So retention strategies should be based on an understanding of factors that affect whether or not employees leave or stay. So for early career employees, 30 years old and under, career advancement is significant. So parang mas uh, ano sila mas nagre-resign yung mga mas bata kasi parang gusto pa nila mag-explore ganyan, job happy. But for the ages 31 to 50, the ability to manage their careers and satisfaction from their work are important. So, hindi na masyado yung mga nag-relicide. Then, yung mga late career employees na may age over 50 uh, will be more interested in security. So, hanggang mag-retired na yan, uh, mag-retired na yan sila. Then, next is the... Um, other factors that affect retention, so the company image, effectiveness of recruitment, selection and deployment, fitting people into job that suits them, leadership, employees join companies and lead managers, learning and career opportunities, performance recognition and rewards. And so ito din daw yung mga factors na nakaka-affect sa pag-stay na ng isang employee. Kung nare-recognize ba sila, ganyan. Kung tama ba yung, yung trabaho na ginagawa pa nila or kung overwork na ba sila. Ay, factor din yun na nakaka-affect. Then next is uh, the absence management. Absence or attendance management is the development and application of policies and procedures designed to reduce levels of absenteeism. So, ano ba yung mga practice na kailangan gawin para mabawasan yung pag-absent ng mga employees? So, I think uh, one of effective, effective ways is yung mag-issue na may mga ganyan. Uh, then, kung ilang beses lang pwede mag-absent in a month, 
Tapos, pwede rin, ano, may mga consequences, like suspensions, ganyan. Pero kapag ka sobrang dami na na absent, eh, hindi na siya tolerable. Uh, pero, uh, kailangan alam din natin yung process ng pag-absent. Pag-absent nila. Baka naman kasi uh, yung, trabaho, yung trabaho pala nila ay uh, paulit-ulit na lang. Uh, nag enjoy So, gusto na nilang absent na lang. Parang naisip nila na, ay kahit wala naman na, oh, may gagawa naman na work ko. Ganun. So, pwede rin natin sila, uh, parang yung kanina, i uh, bibigyan ng other opportunity sa ibang position para naman magkaroon sila ng bagong routine and at least magkakaroon din ng career growth. So, baka naman din stress na sila kaya umaabsent na lang. Uh, it is estimated that 40 million working days are lost each year in the UK through stress. So, this can be attributed to workload, poor working condition, ship work, role ambiguity or conflict relationships and organizational climate. So, baka sobrang stress na or baka nag-OTY na, ganyan kaya gusto na lang mag-absent. Then also, the frequent job transfer uh, increase absentee. Same sa example nito, uh, yung mga guards, uh, di ba kasi sila ay shifting. So, iba-iba yung kanilang uh, schedules. So, for halimbawa, binigyan sila ng one-week schedule sa ganitong lugar, tapos ganitong oras. So, bilang maiiba. So, syempre, meron din naman silang mga prior na mga lakad. So, syempre, tao din naman sila. Kaya, nag-lead siya sa absence. Absence na lang. Then, uh, also, nakaka-affect din yung management style. Uh, factor din yung management style. The quality of management, especially the that of immediate supervisors affect the level of absenteeism. Then, physical working conditions. Baka naman may iniinda ng sakit, mga ganyan. Also, work group size. So, the, li- the larger the organization, the higher the absence rate. So, ayun nga, parang iniisip nila na kahit, uh, ay kahit mag-absent ako, may tasalo naman sa work ko, kaya, kaya okay lang na mag-absent. Ayun. So, ano ba yung mga dapat uh, nagawin para ma-reduce nga yung absenteeism? So, pwede rin ano, uh, magkaroon ng reward system kapag kawalang uh, absent or perfect attendance. Um, and also, meron ding personal factors. Yung absent management. Uh, One is employee values. So, for some workers, doing less work for the same reward improves the deal made with the employer. The following positive outcomes of absence have been shown by research to be particularly important to employees. Break from routine, leisure time, dealing with personal business, and break from co-workers. Next factor is the age. So, sabi sa research, younger employees are more frequently absent than old ones. Also, factor is personality. Some people are absence prone. Studies have noticed that between 5 and 10% of workers account for about half of total absence, while a few are never absent at all. Next is flexibility planning. Flexible planning is a context reactive environment adaptive organization of plans that facilitates development and growth. So, ayun nga yung kanina, paano ba yung mga ways na dapat gawin para maging flexible yung mga employees? And that's the end of our uh, resourcing practice. And let's proceed to chapter 20, which is talent management. So talent management is the process of ensuring that the organization has the talented people it needs to attain its business goals. So the term talent management may refer to simply management succession planning and or management development activities. Although this notion does not really add anything to these familiar processes except a new name. 
Admittedly quiet and evocative one, it is better to regard talent management as a more comprehensive and integrated bundle of activities. The aim of which is to create a pool of talent in an organization, bearing in mind that talent is a major corporate resource. And also talent is what people must have in order to perform well in their roles. Uh, they make a difference organizational performance through their immediate efforts and they have the potential to make an important contribution in the future. So talent management aims to identify, obtain, keep and develop those talented people. So it's an appreciation of table of the process of talent management. So it starts the talent management strategy and what it signifies in terms of future demand for talented people. The next is talent planning, resourcing, talent development, followed by talent pool. So there are elements of talent management. So talent planning is the process of establishing how many and what sort of talented people are needed now and in future. It is used as the techniques of work, workforce planning and described in Chapter 17 and leads to the development of policies for attracting and retaining talent and for estimating future requirements as monitored by talent audits. Next is resourcing. Uh, the outcomes of talent planning are programs for obtaining people from within the outside organization internal and external resources. Internally, they involve the identification of talent, talent development, and career management. Externally, they mean the implementation of policies for attracting high-quality people. The next is talent identification. Days of talent audits to establish who is eligible to become part of the talent pool. The next is talent relationship management. The Building relationships with people in their roles, it is better to build on an existing relationship rather than try to create a new one. When someone leaves, the aims are to recognize the value of individual employees, provide opportunities for growth, treat them fairly, and achieve talent engagement, ensuring that people are committed to their work and the organization. Next is the talent development. Learning and development policies and programs are the key components of talent management. Uh, they aim to ensure that the people acquire and enhance the skills and competencies they need. Policies should be formulated by reference to employee success profiles, which are described in terms of competencies, competencies and define the qualities that need to be developed. Then also talent retention, the implementation of policies is designed to ensure that the talented people remain as engaged and committed members of the organization. Then there is career management. As discussed later in this chapter, this is concerned with the provisions of opportunity for the people to that organization as the flow of talent it needs and they can satisfy their own aspirations. So management succession planning, as far as possible, the objective is to see that the organization has the managers it requires to meet future business needs. It is considered in detail, in detail later in this chapter. So this is the appreciation of the table of talent management. Ayan. So next is career management should be based on an understanding of career dynamics. So ito career dynamics ay may tatlong stages uh, which is the expanding, establishing, and maturing. So pag ang isang organization ay mabilis siya mag-expand, so uh, malaki din yung chance na magkakaroon ng career growth yung employee. Then, habang ito naman, if, habang yung line naman is pababa, so meron din chance, may chance na mag resign na lang yung employee. So also, appreciation of career management process. 
And next is management succession plan. Management succession plan is the process of ensuring that capable managers are available to fill vacant managerial positions. So three questions. Three questions need to be answered. So first, are there enough potential successors available? A supply of people coming through who can take key roles in longer term. Second, are they good enough? Third, do they have the right skills and competencies for the futures? For the future, at different stages in their careers, managers may be categorized as being ready to do the next job now or being ready for a specified higher grade position. In say two years time, as apply higher on, on the A-list for senior management potential. Then ito naman yung uh, management succession schedule. So kapag ka merong mga uh, nagre-resign, dapat nakahanda na yung mga kung sino yung mga papalit. And kung uh, galing din siya sa uh, internal na promote siya to what position and when. And so ito yung parang sample form na ginagamit. And that's all for people resourcing. Thank you for listening.